guys, how's everybody doing? Can you see me? Yes, you can. Okay, so I am in Eureka at the secret location where the tree is being held. Um, Betsy Totten with the Six Rivers National Forest escorted me in. It's crazy. They have security and it's gated and it's like, uh, it's a stop where the tree is being... Uh, Your drivers are right here. Hold on, drivers. What? We're taking it across the country. You guys. Okay. Names. Names. My name is Mike. Mike. Jeremy. Jeremy. John. Mike, Jeremy, and John. Where are you guys from? Spokane. Spokane. Spokane, Washington. So what has it been like driving a big old Christmas tree? I mean, how many feet is this? At 80 something? How many feet? 80, 84 foot tree? 80 feet. This is incredible. So tell me a little bit about what it's like. Do you have to have like, it has to be drinking water, right? I, I believe they're putting a bladder in it. Yeah. So uh, like a bladder is like water at the end of the tree for it to drink while you guys are en route. So when you need to take a stop to like eat or whatever, what, how, how do you, where do you park this thing? Yeah. Oh, you haven't gotten to a place yet. Wow. Wait, I feel like we need to get you guys like, you know, a portable everything. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Have you ever transported anything like this in your life? Really? Big things? Wow. How did you guys get selected for this amazing opportunity? Lots of years with the company and no accidents. Wow, good for you. That's amazing. Yeah, we get this sugar bear. We got to protect sugar bear and route. So tell me a little bit about the logistical challenges that I'm going to just, uh, if, can I put you guys over here? Is that okay? Because I want to look at the tree while we're talking about this. I'm so sorry. Um, so you're going through like different areas. Some areas probably have snow. So how do you ensure that the tree stays safe throughout the process of getting all the way to the East Coast? Well, uh, hopefully we won't hit no snow. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Are you making a conscious effort to go around it? Well, in the southern route. Yeah. So we, we shouldn't hit no snow. No. Yeah. So. So we what? The wonderful uh, highway patrol helping us out. Yeah. Escorting you guys. Yep. Right on. If we hit snow, we'll just have to shut down. Yeah. <laughs> so what are the stops that you're making first? Crescent City, north of here, and then back to Eureka, and. After that, I'm not. Um, Fortuna. Fortuna and Willow Creek, I think, also. Willow Creek, and Willow Creek. Yeah, and then we're going across the Golden Gate Bridge. I know that. <gasps> that is going to be a monumental freaking view of the tree going over the Golden Gate Bridge. I hope all the media there is aware that this is happening because they are going to want to get a look at this sugar bear. How incredible! So let's talk about. This is Sam. Uh, so is it okay if I call you Sam or Samantha? Do you prefer? So tell me a little bit about how the logistics are of transporting this tree. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to still follow you around, though. <laughs> Don't be surprised if I pop up again. So you were telling me a little bit about the type of tree. It was a conifer, you said. What else? Yeah, Let's walk and talk with the tree. Sure. So this is Sugar Bear. It was given the nickname because we had six candidate trees to choose from. The very first tree that we found was on Grizzly Mountain, so it was nicknamed Grizzly Bear. And honestly, it was a way for us to be able to recognize and differentiate each of the six beautiful trees. Why six trees? Because it's the Six, Six River Rivers National, National Forest. Sugar Bear was the one that selected. It is a beautiful 84 foot white fur um, with about a 20 skirt diameter. Wow. Millions Hi, honey. How are you? Oh, this. Can you imagine being a kid seeing a tree like this in this size? So, okay, let's go down. Can I walk around? Of I want to oh, see. Yeah. So you were telling me earlier about this bladder bag. What is so? What is that? That feeds the tree its water. Yeah. So as you can see here, here's the top front of the tree. Once the tree is actually put onto the other truck, there's going to be about 15 foot plastic encasing over this, and we're actually going to decorate the top portion of the Christmas tree. So when people are on the road, they can physically see the tree inside. Oh. And see it but at the very end of the tree, it's like, how do we keep this tree healthy? How do we keep it? Um, hydrated. Yeah. We're going to do that through a 40 to 50 gallon bladder bag that's going to go on the base of the tree. Now Sugar Bear being this size and about between 50 and 60 years old, maybe a little bit on the closer to the 50 year side, can drink up to six to eight gallons of water a day. So the 50 gallon bladder bag, we're going to make sure it is um, well stocked so Sugar Bear can drink along the road as we make our 3,500 mile all the way from Crescent City to Washington, D.C. in three weeks. What's the route going to be? Like, tell me about the different states it's going to go through. So we're starting in California, specifically we're starting in the North Coast. So we'll be staying particular time to this community that calls the Six Rivers National Forest their home. 
will be starting October 29th in Crescent City. That evening will be in Eureka on D Street. The next day we'll be in Willow Creek in Fortuna before we're making our way down the 101 going toward Ukiah. From there, we're going to get some of the iconic imagery, crossing the Golden Gate Bridge, heading Vallejo to the state capitol, down the Sierras to the iconic Rose Bowl Stadium, to the Redlands Joshua Tree, and then we head out of California and start making that trip all the way to Washington, D.C. Oh, wow. We can stop in Arizona, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Missouri, Ohio, Maryland, and then Washington, D.C. In Incredible. How many people are working on this, like the transportation and, and just all the logistics? Well, as our theme is Six Rivers, Many People's One Tree. So it definitely are many, many people <laughs> are contributing to this effort. We are so thankful to our sponsors like System Transport, Kenworth Trucks, and so many others to make this actually possible. On the tree journey itself, there'll be a small core team of those who have been working the logistics issue, the health of the tree, communications and whatnot. But we're also going to have a, a, um, a team with the truck itself to include in the clinic to make sure that we can take care of any issues along the road. And there, uh, somebody here asked, how tall is the tree? Uh, Edward wants to say, what's the height of the tree? So a, um, Sugar Bear is 84 feet, excuse me, 84 feet um, when she was cut. I would say probably the tree now is 81 feet. We cut about three, three feet off. And what do you have to say to the people that are like, okay, well, this tree's 50 years old. Did we have to cut it down for this? Like, how do you respond to that? No, that's a great question. So, you know, one of the things that was really important to us when we were selecting candidate trees was choosing trees in areas that really needed to be thinned anyway. Most people re remember last year in Mad River Ranger District, the 2020 um, August Complex fire, the single largest wildfire recorded in California's history. Um, what happened there? I know we're getting a little bit of noise. Um, so when we look at thinning trees, when we look at thinning forests, we're going into areas where there's huge population of trees, areas where there's huge fuel on the ground and fuel ladders that can make a catastrophic wildfire even more deadly. So one of our requirements was going into places where we knew that we had to be thinned anyway, not only for fire protection, but just for a healthier forest. Because when there's a whole bunch of trees together, they're competing for the same nutrients, they're competing for the same sun and resources. So this is an area that we need to be thinned anyway, and Sugar Bear was right there in the opportunity um, to be able to get her and to present her on the national level. This is so incredible. Yeah. What a historical event to have this come from our very own forest on the North Coast. The last time it came from California was 10 years ago, wow. in 2011 from the San Blas National Forest. But this is the fifth time that California has been selected to provide the U.S. Capitol tree in its 51-year history. Yay. And the farthest north from um, Sacramento was 36 years ago. So the fact that, I mean, North Coast, 36 years ago, um, and that was the Klamath National Forest in 1986. How special is this? OMG. Very, very cool. Huge operation. So what's going to happen now? You mentioned PG&E's en route. Yeah, so we have a couple great sponsors. So this was our trailer that was able to physically, once we took, picked the tree up from the crane and put it onto this platform, this was to get it down from the Mad River Ranger District. Now we're going to be gently lifting her up and putting her on a different trailer that will be making the entire journey with us cross country to Washington, D.C. How special. What happens if like limbs get lost along the way? That's, Has that happened yet? That is a great question. Oh, I'm so glad that you asked that. So you can see here, sugar, you know, it's a bit sparse in the middle here. There were a couple extra limbs that were um, taken with us because it's going to take us about two to three days to be able to pack it. We have to do it delicately and deliberately. You can see there some of the branches themselves are a bit smaller. We can lose the integrity and the bendability of it. But we also know what reality is and some branches may break off. So once we hand it over to the architect of the Capitol, we'll hand over the tree along with a couple other white fir branches that were fallen in the movement. And they're going to be able to help graft it and make it a beautiful full tree full of California ornaments and lights to be lit in early December. Ooh. Um, Marianne says, Sam, you were one of my great biology students. I see you become a forest service professional. Yay. <laughs> and someone else said you're a very good um, spokesperson for the U.S. Forest Service. Thank you. Um, and thank you for saying the U.S. Forest Service. You know, this tree is, um, as we know, it's coming from a national forest. There are 154 national forests across the entire country. And national forests, as a taxpayer, this is your backyard. So you get to share in this joy with us as well. And out of the 154 forests, we're so glad that the Six Rivers was our um, selectee this year. Yeah. Edward wants to know, what are the plans for the tree after the holidays, you know? That's a great question. And that's a question I would have to give to the architect of the Capitol. <laughs> I know they have a disposition plan as it happens with all trees, but um, that's a great question right to on, ask. Edward. Uh, good question. Yeah. <laughs> 
very incredibly super cool and awesome if you guys have any other questions in the comments drop them in right now while i have sam here so i can ask and um i i don't know how long is it going to be until pg e gets here do you know I don't, I don't know right now. So okay. no worries. Know, being flexible as always yes, of you know, course. when it comes to the, such a huge production of this, yes. we have to make sure that we're agile and, and mobile. Yes, yes. But I do I, want to make recognition that this truck is a new um, T680 next generation Ken Kenworth truck by System Transport. Wow, they even painted it for the tree. That is so cool. And that background is actually from the Six Rivers National Forest. Woo! This is amazing. What a big production, guys. And how cool is that going to be when you're on the freeway and you see the U.S. Capitol Christmas tree just strolling down the highway? Very, very cool. This is the neatest thing, guys. So U.S. Capitol Christmas tree is in Eureka. They are waiting for PG&E to come and they're going to take this tree and put it onto that trailer there. So huge operation. They're bringing in a crane to do it. But I wanted to give you the first hand look up close at the U.S. Capitol Christmas tree because how awesome is this? How often do you get a chance to see the U.S. Capitol Christmas tree up close? And right in our own backyard, no less, it came from our own forest, the Six Rivers National Forest. Really incredible super special once in a lifetime experience for me indeed and uh, i'm going to be following it as it travels across the u.s i'm going to go ahead and jump off and see what's next take some photos and i will catch you on the next one as we follow and track the capitol christmas tree again you can track it too at uscapitalchristmastree.com bye everybody